I'm, I'm so thankful to be doing the thing that I love to do. Hmm. I mean, I think that, that, cool, makes, that makes such a difference. You know, when I was third grade, eight years old, mm -hmm. I remember we had career day. Mm -hmm. There was a fellow by the name of John that came to speak with us. He was the only one I remember, to be fair. Um, we had, you know, uh, firemen, EMTs, mm -hmm. policemen were coming to speak to us about whatever, um, about their jobs and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. And then, of course, at that time, I guess, things were a little more stable, societally speaking. So they had the time to do that. Mm -hmm. And so they come in and speak to us. John made the statement that he knew when he was four years old, he wanted to be a fireman. He thought that was the coolest job on the planet. And so at that time, he was driving the ladder truck. And that was hmm. exactly the job he wanted. Huh. So he was the first person I ever heard use the phrase, living the dream. And it just struck me, living the dream. Hmm. Huh. He also said that if you choose to do what you love, you never work a day in your life. I know that sounds cliche, but it's absolutely true. Yeah. And Living the dream, you have to define yourself, not by what other people say it right. is. Right. And that's why I think it's so important that you decide... I always try to encourage our kids. What do you want to do? What makes you happy? Yeah, totally. You know, because totally. at the end of the day, when you're working, mm -hmm. you're going to spend most of your time doing that thing. So it makes sense to me that you do something that you enjoy. And mm -hmm. if you can find a way to live within the confines of what that affords you, mm. you know, I always try to encourage folks to live below their means. You know, um, my background is well, I don't come from money. I mean, it's really that simple. Um, I wouldn't say I grew up poor. But we just got by, as it were. And um, always struggling to try to keep finances in order and that sort of thing. And I saw the fights that resulted from all that hmm. and this and that. And I just like, you know, I don't want that to be my normal. And that was kind of the defining mission for me, I guess, as it were, just hmm. to do things differently than what I knew to be the norm so that I could have a better life. You know, and that, that was it. So um, I set about just doing things differently. Uh, as it relates to my relationship with Christ, well, I came to Christ about 15, 15 17 years ago. Okay, really? Huh. And uh, when my pastor had baptized me, and I came out of the water and I heard the Holy Spirit speak again, I realized in all that time I'd always regarded the Holy Spirit as my subconscious. I didn't know the Holy Spirit before that moment. Um, didn't grow up in a church. I mean, I would go to church with my parents mm -hmm. and my mom and my dad separately. They mm -hmm. were never married. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was a Jehovah's Witness. So you attended I, church but hadn't uh, been born again? Yeah, I, yeah. Hadn't been born again. Um, it was not the greatest experience, you know, being in the Jehovah's Witness place. Mm -hmm. It's very heavy. Just heavy mm -hmm. energy. And God energy wanted you to see that for a reason, to right? To I, I'm inclined to believe that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am. Um, Some of yeah. us, I think, need to see uh, what you know is not the truth, right? Um, so that we, I don't know, I, we don't really know exactly why, but God does, right? I sure. Mean, yeah. Sure. And I, I and I think that's the very embodiment of of, of being a faithful and faith-filled person. Mm -hmm. um, is that we know that He has our best interests at heart. And we trust him to lead us and to guide us in that way. And uh, so, you know, I guess, like I said, coming from where I do and seeing the things I did growing up, I had mm -hmm. more examples of the kind of person I don't want to be mm -hmm. uh, around me. And, uh, yeah, I want to do things differently. Mm -hmm. So what that meant for me was just trying to do the right thing all the mm -hmm. time. Even when it wasn't the popular thing, it was the right thing to do. And so it's been an uphill battle for me always, all of it. And it's okay. You know, I don't mind it. Um, but as I said, after, after the baptism, when the Holy Spirit spoke, I realized, wow, what I thought was my subconscious was the Holy Spirit all this time. Mm. And it made me, it made me want to love, want, want to serve him more. That's I a guess powerful the uh, revelation there. I mean. uh, it was for me. I was overwhelmed, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's what you say. Know, I was overwhelmed because... Um, in that moment, I also How did realized, you feel? Did you feel relieved, love? Did you feel sad? I mean, I it wasn't relief. It was mm -hmm. love. Okay. It was a degree of love that I hadn't previously mm -hmm. experienced. Mm -hmm. um, 
to think that he loved me not because I asked him to, but mm. because he recognized that I needed him to be there. Mm. I mean, like I said, I didn't, I didn't know the Lord before that moment. And to know that the Holy Spirit had always been with me, mm. that was pretty moving, you know, so. Um, yeah, because it's, it's like it's speaking to you saying, I've always been here just <laughs> waiting for you as, you know, we prepared you. Yeah. Well, the word tells us that he loved us first. Mm -hmm. He knew us before we formed in the womb. And, you know, I'd, I'd read that, I'd seen it, understood it, but I didn't feel it until that mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. In that moment, that's when I felt it. And uh, so then just in typical, you know, William fashion, just mm -hmm. doing things my way, the right way, even when it's not the popular thing to do. So that's what led me to having this place. Um, I'd been. Yeah, you uh, said that you uh, you're living the dream. This is the job you always wanted, and you gave gave us the firefighter example. So, mm -hmm. when did you know you always wanted to work in cars or with your hands, or you wanted to have a shop, or when did you know you wanted to have your own shop? Or I think I decided that once I got into the industry mm -hmm. and began working and seeing just kind of what the status quo is, you know, how people run their businesses and what motivates people mm -hmm. who work within the, mm -hmm. this industry. And unfortunately, for most of them, it's just money. I mean, nothing else seemed to matter. It was always about trying to find ways to generate more revenue. And the constant But you thing, mean more typical in this industry than others? I, I would I agree, so. to be honest. I mean, and that's why I've always been very impressed by what you're saying, because it's not, it's not an easy industry or business to be in and right. still stay true. At least I, I, I right. would think. I agree. I, I would struggle too. Well, yeah. And I, again, I guess it depends on what your motivation is. You know, I think that that's a big part of it. And I'm in the service industry because I want to serve. Mm. You know, as I said, you know, every person that comes through the door here, they come in with a problem. It's my job to identify what the problem is and find a solution that works for them. You want to serve, but you are serving them in a particular way, right? right? So I'm serving in, in a way that I'm doing it. Did you pick this in particular or was it just something you were good at and you wanted to serve? And so you put two and two together. Well, I love cars. Mm -hmm. I love people. Just a natural <laughs> fit for me. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Just really that simple, you know. And uh, cars always make me happy. Mm -hmm. You know, even to this day, my wife doesn't understand how I can leave work and come home and find myself engrossed in something else about cars. She goes, "It's just you're constantly, you know, involved with automobiles." I'm like, yeah, I want to know what's going on. I want to know what's coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. How it's going to affect me. I want to understand what people's experiences are when they go to other places, so I can learn from those people's yeah. mistakes. Make sure we don't repeat them here. Yeah, you know. Well, it's and, a, you you, uh, you have a sense of duty, and yes. that's because you're an honorable man. It's my customers depend on me to uh, stay up on things and be educated and help them the best I can. Right. right. 